Yo, what's up guys, so today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto got harem with Ikumo, Meitarumi and Kurosuchi, part 1, hope you'll enjoy this video, so before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, T. Karin, link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. Let's begin the video. In the middle of the day, just before noon, the sun was bearing down on the large village of Kanahagakur. A young teen was leaning back in a chair, sitting in front of a small restaurant, on a stool. The teen seemed to be around 14 maybe 15 years old, being around 5 feet tall. It seemed to be a pretty average height for someone his age. He was skinny, and had fair skin, along with messy blonde hair, which seemed to emphasize his dark blue eyes. He wore a black shirt with an orange V-shaped stripe pattern along it. He also wore blue pants, and gray shoes. Naruto leaned back, and glanced up, as he casually ate his ramen. Well he ate he hummed to himself with a cocky smirk on his face. Something that was pretty normal, since he was a teenager. Naruto. A male voice yelled, causing the blind to close his eyes, and sighed, before he smiled in a very playful manner. Oh, Iruka Naruto said, as he turned, and looked at the chunin. Sup? He asked. What the hell are you doing during class time? Iruka yelled, causing Naruto to blink a few times, as he glanced down at the ramen cup in his hand. He glanced around at the small restaurant he was in. I've taken up pottery, can't you tell? Naruto asked wily, smirking towards the older man. Iruka formed a tick, as he glared at the teen, as his face turned red. Tomorrow is the Shinobi Academy's graduation exam, and you failed it the last two times. This isn't the time to be skipping class. He yelled. Hey those time limits aren't fair, it should be important that I know the information, not how fast I know it. Naruto replied with some irritation, before it left. Besides, what if I don't want to be a ninja, I hear those samurai are pretty cool, plus they seem to be smarter. He added, giving the chun in a shameless smirk. Quit being an idiot, and let's go. Uruka yelled, as he pointed at the blonde teen. Idiot. Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow, before he smirked. I'm not the one talking to myself. He added, but Uruka jumped, as Naruto's voice came from the street behind him. Uruka turned around, and saw Naruto sitting at a small ramen restaurant, before he glanced back, and saw there was a window next to him, with the blonde teen's reflection in it. Damn it, Naruto. Quit doing that. He yelled. Sorry, Uruka Naruto said with a wily smile, showing that he really wasn't. It's just so hard to stop doing what is so easy to do. He replied with a cocky tone in his voice. Iruka's eye twitched, before he smiled darkly, and pulled out rope. A few minutes later, Iruka threw a tied up Naruto into the classroom. Most of the kids in the class looked around two years younger than the blonde himself, though they looked at Naruto weirdly. Sensei, he's that. A pink-haired, green-eyed girl asked curiously. Iruka gave her a glare, not really in the mood for more jokes today. He looked at Naruto, and his eyes went wide, the person that was tied up wasn't the blonde teen, it was an old man. Jeez, Sensei. You really showed me what Naruto's voice said, as he walked into the classroom with his hands in his pockets, and his usual wily smirk on his face. Tying up a fragile old man, and dragging him halfway across the village. I gotta say. You've got my attention now. He added. Naruto casually walked past the enraged Chunin, and sat down in one of the seats. As he sat down, he leaned back, and propped one of his feet against the table in front of him. He was Naruto Uzumaki, the self-proclaimed genius. A lot of people who actually knew him, liked to call him the mentalist or the trickster. Despite his large chakra reserves, and his almost abysmal chakra control, he was almost impossibly good at Jinjutsu. Like he said about the time limits of the tests not being fair, he knew about a lot of the things, some useless, and some invaluable. Even before he joined the academy, with the life he had. Being an orphan, and while being poor, he had to find a way to survive. Naruto was one what people would call a master of prestidigitation, otherwise known as sleight of hand. He's been doing it for years, since he was young. He's done it for almost a large portion of his life, and he always uses it. Even if it's just to mess with people, mostly for the sake of getting people riled up. When he first joined the academy, he learned that he hated a lot of things. Learning was easy. He was just too bored to stay still. He learned that his chakra control was shit. He learned that he was mediocre if not worse than that in ninjutsu. But he learned something else. He learned he was incredibly good at jinjutsu, which suited him just fine. He had no idea why he was so good with jinjutsu. He was baffled, as to why, even with his large reserves of chakra, and crappy control, he was incredibly skilled with it. Though he didn't have techniques, it was more instinctual, and in his subconscious. Time for a henge test. Everyone lines up. And transforms perfectly into me. Iruka announced, with the students getting out of their seats. Transform perfectly to you. That's kinda pertinacious. Naruto commented wily, as he stood in line. Why not something more practical, and more useful? He began with a smirk. Like that chair over there. He added. Shut up. And do the damn henge. Uruka yelled, as he formed several tick marks. So is it a green light on the chair, alright then Naruto began, as he formed a hand seal. No, idiot. 
he announced angrily. Naruto rolled his eyes and formed a hand seal before he was enveloped in a cloud of smoke. There, he said, as the cloud dissipated, revealing an identical Erika. Finally honestly, if you actually did what you were told, you wouldn't be such an idiot, Iruka said, as he rubbed his forehead. Well, if I always did what I was told, I would be one of those peons over there. Naruto said uncaringly, as he glanced at the other children, getting glares from them. Iruka sighed in disappointment. A few hours later, Naruto was walking through the village with a plastic bag in one hand, containing some containers of instant ramen. After a few steps, Naruto bumped into a man, causing the man to fall back. Oh? Naruto sounded, before he reached out, and helped the man up. Bankwadi said, as he got a better look at Naruto. In an instant his demeanor shifted to a more nervous one, before he quickly walked away from the blonde. HMPH. Naruto sounded, as he looked forward, and smirked, as he held up his hand, revealing a wallet, before he put it in his wallet. Ah, is that what they teach in school now? A male voice said, causing Naruto to stop, and sigh loudly. Naruto turned, and noticed a teen around his age leaning against the wall, with his arms crossed. He was well built, and a few inches taller than the blonde teen, and had pale skin. He had silver gray hair that was partially slicked back while unkempt at the front, and silver gray eyes. He wore a gray and black two-tone partial zip jacket that covered his upper body, and similarly colored pants, along with armor on his shoulders, resembling Rerebrus's. He also wore a large pair of black boots. Come on, man. Be a little more enthusiastic when we meet. It's like you don't like me or something. The silver gray haired teen said with a smirk. I don't know, maybe it's because you're douch, Mercury. Naruto said with a shameless smile, as he walked up towards the silver gray haired teen. Is there any way to talk to your superior, academy student? Mercury questioned. Not for long. Naruto replied, referring to the academy student comment. Oh? You're actually going to try and pass this time? I'm shocked. Mercury said sarcastically, as he pushed himself off the wall. Naruto rolled his eyes at the teen his age. Mercury was an orphan, just like him. Though it was more of a different case, his mother gave him up since she didn't have enough money to support him, and his father well. No one knew who he was. He and Naruto knew each other since they were in dippers. The blonde teen smirked, as he looked at Mercury. He knew that Mercury was probably the one person in the entire village who knew him best. They did a lot of things together. They even joined the academy together. Though when Naruto failed the test the first time, Mercury passed, and became a genin. Well if I don't actually try this time, I'll never become a shinobi. Naruto said with a shrug, as he glanced at his oldest friend. Despite the fact Mercury dressed, and acted like a hipster douch bag, Naruto thought he was cool, and a good friend. Mercury had flaws, and Naruto knew he wasn't a saint either, and knew he had his own flaws too. Then why exactly are we becoming shinobi again? Mercury questioned, as the two began to walk along the sidewalk. If we want to leave this village, becoming an in sort of fucks it up. He said dryly, as he crossed his arms behind the back of his neck. It only makes it harder, not impossible. Naruto replied, before he scowled, as he glanced down at his stomach, and lifted up his shirt, revealing a swirl-like tattoo. And I believe if I become an in, I might be able to learn what the hell this thing is supposed to be sealing. He added. Mercury nodded at that one. So we're basically everyone's going to see us, as a couple of idiots who went on to become shinobi. He commented, as he looked up. I just love that plan. He added sarcastically. We aren't idiots, or pretending to be them either. Naruto replied with a sigh. I had to be the dead lass. Mercury said with some anger, before he closed his eyes, and relaxed. Naruto glanced at Mercury, before he smirked. But you also were able to study, and train under who was it again? He asked with a smirk. Ikgaoyuzuki Mercury replied with a shrug, as he looked forward. An Anbu member, from what I could gather, she was, and is incredibly skilled, but is a bit how you say he trailed off, before he smirked. Trusting, depressed, vulnerable he added. HMPH, does this have anything to do with the incidents involving your teammates? Naruto asked with a wily smile. It's such a shame, almost every year, around this time. One of your teammates seems to suddenly get killed off in a mission. I wonder if there's a coincidence. He commented, with a hand in his pocket, while carrying a bag in the other. I know, I just maybe I'm cursed. Mercury said with a laid-back look on his face, not looking too concerned about it. Naruto glanced down, and then looked forward. He knew it was Mercury who was doing it, sometimes people said the wrong thing to him or even just annoyed him, and he would put them in a situation in which they would be killed. Naruto also knew it was to create space, so if he actually passed, he could join his team. What the blonde did was simple, to make sure he got with Mercury's team, he had to make sure almost everything he had was perfectly average. His ninjutsu was incredibly poor, so he countered it with his ninjutsu. The intelligence and tajutsu he presented was a perfect average. Naruto knew what Mercury's team was based around, thanks to his friend's information. 
Mercury was incredibly skilled in Jujutsu. He was very acrobatic and had that involved in his fighting style, and he seemed to be decent in ninjutsu. From what he knew, there was also another member on his team that was incredibly smart and was really good in medicine, along with medical ninjutsu. With his skills in Jinjutsu, along with the possibility of learning Kinjutsu, the team would be incredibly well-rounded. Having a form of rock, paper, scissors type of coagulation. So, this Ikgaryuzuki, you said, told me she was good with Kinjutsu. Naruto asked. Yeah, I was able to get a peek at her training not too much, but a decent look. Want me to help you through the process? Mercury questioned, causing Naruto to frown. No, this might need a more hands-on approach. Naruto admitted, as he looked forward. In the relatively short lifetime together, he and Mercury helped each other out, a lot in fact. For years, Mercury was dedicated to learning to fight, while he observed the Genin, Chunin, and Jonin training in Jujutsu. He used all that he saw, and studied to create his own hybrid fighting style, something he imparted to Naruto. While Naruto knew he could handle himself in a hand-to-hand -hand fight, he knew he didn't hold a candle to Mercury in just that skill. Of course, with Mercury helping Naruto in Jujutsu, the blonde repaid him with teaching him by teaching him how to break out of Jinjutsu. The spark Naruto had for Jinjutsu, he couldn't teach it to Mercury. Mostly because Naruto himself didn't know how he did most of it, it just came to him. He could move his chakra into his fingers and snap them, causing someone to hear things that he did and didn't want them to. He could tap someone on the shoulder and make them feel things that weren't there. He could look someone in the eyes and have them see mirages and after images. It was all instinctual and he wasn't sure if it could be taught. And then there was the fact that with Mercury being a genin, he could get a hold of some documents and books on Fuinjutsu. Naruto seemed to have a knack for it, but he really didn't care for it. All Fuinjutsu could really do was seal objects, living beings, chakra, along with a wide variety of other things within another object. Though the way I crudely used them made some interesting things Naruto thought as he glanced at Mercury's greaves, and then he looked down at his own hands and arms. Interesting things. He thought to himself. If you say so, bitch. Mercury replied, as he rested his head behind his hands. Whatever, douch. Naruto responded, as the two smirked. So this teacher you have, is she hot? He asked shamelessly. I don't think you've got what it takes to get with her. And well, she has purple hair. Mercury said with a shake of his head. PFFT, I don't care. Seriously, how hot is she? Naruto asked, only for Mercury to move up ahead. A few hours later, Naruto was walking to his place alone. He woke up to his apartment door and noticed a man standing in front of his door with his arms crossed. Rent. He said. Yeah about that Naruto began. Rent. He repeated. Naruto rolled his eyes before he walked up towards the man. Of course, yes, I have your money. But you need to relax first. You're a stressed person. It'll only hurt your body more to keep it up. Just relax. Naruto said in a very calming manner, causing the attendant to visibly relax. Maybe you should count down, how much is my rent a 200, 199, 198, as it goes down, and down 197, 196 he said calmly, before Naruto noticed the man's eyes glaze over, and waved a hand in front of his face, and then noticed not change. You need to calm, and relax, you will be paid. In fact you've been paid. You're paid every day, in fact you're paid so much you don't need me to pay rent. Naruto said, as he reached out, and put a hand on the man's shoulder. Why don't you relax, take a walk down to your apartment. Get a nice cold refreshing drink. Find a girlfriend or boyfriend whatever you're into. And when you're done, go to sleep in your bed. When you wake up tomorrow, you'll forget all about this, you'll feel happy, and you'll leave me alone. Naruto finished, before the man blinked a few times, and slowly turned around, and walked away. Naruto smiled in a wily manner, as he entered his apartment. I love being me sometimes. He thought. The next day. Naruto was sitting in one of the chairs in the academy classroom. He leaned back in his chair, and glanced up. What kind of medals should it have? He thought, before he looked down at the table. In front of him on the table was a piece of paper, with sketches on it. There were designs for a sword, with its specs. It was scaled to be around a foot and a half long, just about the size, if not a bit shorter than his arm. Chakra metal might be useful, but they're too expensive, and I don't think I could convince them to give it to me for free. Naruto thought with a smirk. Plus, it's pretty fucking useless. I mean, from what I know, shinobi could just channel their chakra into regular kunais and blades. He mused dryly. Naruto tapped his pencil down a few times before he smirked. Oh I know, how about some industrial grade ultra high carbon steel, the stuff that's used to cut stone and hard metals like steel and metal girders. He thought, since mostly only civilians work in the industry, he could convince some of them to make something for him. I bet I could integrate a titanium carbide coating into the outer part of the blade. He mused as he wrote his ideas down on the paper. PFFT what else? Naruto muttered as he looked at the drawn sheath. He closed one eye and tilted his head to the side. 
he scribbled something over the sheath, right at the tip of it, forming a large C over it, making the sheath look like an umbrella. Naruto glanced at the specks of the sword, before he erased the hilt of the single-edged bladed sword, and drew a curved umbrella handle hilt. Perfect for concealability, and misdirection. Naruto mused, as he put more notes next to the umbrella sheath. I wonder if I can make Fuenjutsu seals that could theoretically absorb kinetic energy from attacks, and utilize it in some way he planned. To graduate you'll have to do the bunch of no jutsu when you're called to come to the next room. Iruka announced it to the class. Naruto glanced up for a moment, before he glanced down at his paper, and then his eyes moved a bit, letting him see his own palms. He noticed the two black tribal-like A's, that seemed to be tattooed right at the center of his palms, but in actuality they were seals. Something he crudely made, and jury rigged with his limited knowledge in the subject. After a few minutes, Naruto heard his name called, before he got up, and walked into the other room. Naruto stood in front of a table, with Iruka and Mizuki sitting behind it. So do you just want one clone, two, four? Naruto asked with a shrug. Just make a clone. Iruka said angrily, he just wanted to pass this kid. He seemed to have some ingrained problem with authority. You know I remember two years ago, when we had to do the Shunshin to pass, and then last year the Kawarimi. I gotta say. I've made sure I actually mastered them. Now I gotta do the easiest technique you could've done. PFFT, all that work is just bleh. Naruto complained, as he rolled his eyes. He lifted his hands up, and formed a hand seal, while looking into Iruka's eyes, and then to Mizuki's. Two clones formed next to him, while they didn't leave a shadow, like they weren't solid matter. They weren't semi-transparent like some other clones. They seemed realistic enough to pass, as a viable person from a distance or up really close. You pass, Uruka said with a relieved sigh, and picked up a headband, and tossed it towards the blonde. Now get out. He added. Naruto caught the headband, and smiled playfully, as he walked out of the room. Baruto Namek is your turn. Uruka announced, as Naruto walked out of the room. Naruto turned, and bit, as a boy, around two years younger than him walked by, with the two sharing a glance. The boy had bright blonde hair, contrast to Naruto's darker blonde. He had bright blue eyes, especially compared to Naruto's dark blue ones. He had whisker markings on each of his cheeks, and had a nervous look on his face. How is it there? Bruto asked. Naruto smirked. Eh, it was grueling. He said, as he walked off. What a weird kid. Naruto and Bruto thought at the same time, as they went about their business. A few hours later, Naruto was sitting on a ceiling, and he reached up to the side of his head, and pushed a bit, cracking his neck. Hey there, Naruto. A male voice said, causing Naruto to glance to his side, and saw Mizuki standing behind him. Sup? Naruto questioned, as he glanced at the Chunin. From your scores, you have almost an average grade damn, with some incentive, I'm sure the Hokage will get you up to the top scores in class. Mizuki said. Oh? Naruto sounded like he really didn't care. I know of a secret test that'll get you to the top of the class. And might even get you to a chunin. Mizuki said, as he smirked with an undertone of deceit. You don't say, the sun's a bit bright, don't you think? Naruto asked randomly, as he looked at the teacher. Ah, uh, yeah. Mizuki replied. Unknown to him, Naruto just asked him the random question to get an easy honest answer out of him. By judging the tone in his voice tone, facial movements, eyes, Naruto was able to deduce that Mizuki was lying about the test, by comparing the genuine honest answer of the sun being bright, to the statement about the test. Naruto looked up at the sky, before he sighed, and stood up. He turned, and looked at Mizuki, and put a hand on his shoulder. You're looking a bit stressed, why don't you relax? He asked, as he subconsciously molded chakra in his vocal cords, pupils, and his hand, causing Mizuki to slowly relax. You're looking a bit pale, let's sit in the sun. Relax, let the feeling of those sun rays enter your skin, as you feel the heat lightly bath your arms, and face, you feel a tingling, you let the tingling move through your body, into your mind into your chest, and it feels wonderful, Naruto said calmly, and smirked, noticing the glazed look in the chunin's eyes. You feel that warm tingling move down to your stomach, and you feel tired, but you won't sleep. You feel that tingling going lower and lower, and once it reaches your feet, you'll be entirely relaxed. He said, before Mizuki almost fell, only for Naruto to catch him, and sit him down. Junin sat with barely open eyes, as his head bobbed a bit, like he was about to fall asleep. Close your eyes now, you're safe and relaxed, just listen to my voice, and answer me truthfully, Naruto said calmly, as he smirked wily. Shinobi were resistant to torture, mental intrusion, and mental manipulation, but it would seem they weren't trained for mental suggestion or neurolinguistic programming, or better known, as hypnosis. Now tell me, what you were planning. Naruto instructed the hypnotized Shinobi. On top of the Hokage building, sat Naruto with an old man working a camera. Okay, what about this one Naruto said, as he sucked his cheeks in a bit, pursed his lips, and raised an eyebrow, while adjusting his lips. I call this one my blue steel. He said, as he struck a pose. Whatever it's your photo. The old man rambled. Just don't regret it. 
he added, as he took the photo. An hour later, Naruto was sitting in a large office, waiting. I wonder how Mizuki's doing. He thought to himself with a smirk. After he got control of the Chunin, he learned what the guy was planning. He honestly thought it was pretty stupid, but then again, he didn't like ninjutsu. What he did thought, was to program Mizuki to want to collect Jinjutsu scrolls for himself. There weren't scrolls in which you would learn Jinjutsu techniques. That was stupid. If a technique was, as mainstream, as to be free for everyone's use. Everyone would know its weakness, and the signs of said technique. No, Naruto just wanted higher degree books, and information in Jinjutsu. He understood the basic stuff the books the academy had. But he wanted more advanced knowledge of it. He wanted to create his own techniques, techniques special to him, that only he could utilize at the highest efficiency. Naruto glanced around, and sighed. The Hokage had summoned him, and he's been waiting for almost half an hour. What the hell is taking this guy so damned long? He said irritated. The door opened, before three people walked in. Naruto didn't seem too concerned with them, as he was leaning back in his chair, looking out a window. Usually when you call for someone, the polite response is to usually be there. Naruto said with a smirk, as he looked out of the three people who entered the room. He recognized two of the three, one was Boruto, the boy he saw a few days ago, the second was a man with bright blonde spiky hair, or the Hokage Minato Namikis, and the third one was a middle-aged woman with red hair. Naruto merely glanced at them, before his eyes landed on the wall, to the left of the three, and made an amazed confused face. And like he predicted, Minato, Boruto, and Kashina looked at the area he was looking at. When they were looking for what he saw, Naruto took that time to study the three people. He mentally took down their facial details, their hair colors, their outfit, their relaxed posture, and the similarities and differences they had with each other. The reason he had them look away was so they wouldn't know he was studying them. People tend to put on a face when they learn they're being studied. They try to act their best or try not to act at all. Naruto mused. After a few seconds, the three looked back at Naruto to see he was smiling playfully. What was it you needed me for, Hokage? He asked. There's no need to be so formal, just call me Minato. And you don't have to just sit in that chair, you can move around. Minato said kindly. Naruto almost instantly stood up, before he began to leisurely walk around the office. I must admit it is an honor to be requested by someone of your prestige. He said uncaringly, not even looking at the three. It's alright. I'm a normal person, the same as anyone else. Minato said, as he rubbed the back of his neck. Sure you are. Naruto replied, before he looked at a younger picture of Kashina. Oh my, you take pictures incredibly well. I saw you were at least 18 in this photo. He commented, as he glanced at Kashina. She smiled. No, I was 20 when I had it taken. Kashina admitted. Ha, how foolish of me. Naruto said, as he put the picture down, and looked at the Hokage desk. Anyway there's something we wanted Minato to do. Such a fine desk, I'd hazard a guess, and assume it's made out of mahogany. Naruto said randomly. Yes, yes, Naruto Minato said, causing the team to look at him. Along with your shinobi registration, there comes a certain type of responsibility. He informed me. With that responsibility, comes a certain burden. He said seriously, while Kashina looked down, and Baruto looked away. Yes, I'm well aware of the mantle of the will of fire, and all that jazz. Naruto said uncaringly. I doubt you tell that to every guy that's passed the test. He added. You're right. I wanted to talk to you about the other burden you carry. Minato informed, as he stood behind his desk. Kashina glanced at him, before she stepped forward, and looked at Naruto. Naruto, do you know what a jinchkriki is? She asked kindly. It's a word, with a meaning, tied to an emotion. Naruto replied with a shrug. But I personally don't know what it is. He informed me. It means the power of human sacrifice. Jinchkriki are humans that have tailed beasts sealed within them. Kashina said. But just because they have a beast sealed inside them, doesn't make them the beast itself. She reassured me. Okay Naruto said dryly, as he reached up to the side of his head, and pushed a bit, cracking his neck. Is this what you brought me up here for, to learn remedial lessons on Fujinjutsu? He asked shamelessly. Kashina's eye twitched, as she clenched her fist. Listen to a woman when she's telling you something important, you know. She announced angrily. Naruto opened his eyes, as he looked at her. You know, you kinda noisy. He commented. Yeah, well you're dull, you know. Kashina yelled. I take that as a compliment. He replied with a sigh. You could be an announcer or singer with how loud your voice is. He added. Kashina's red hair flared out behind her, as she moved towards the teen. But she was stopped by Boruto, as he moved in front of her. Mom, calm down. He said. I feel like you don't like me, don't be mean. Naruto said with a grin, before he noticed Kashina glaring at him angrily, trying to swing her fist at him. Tut, that's cold he said with fake sadness. I'm going to remember you, as liquid nitrogen, because that's how cold you are. He said. Okay, okay Minato said, trying to hide his smile at how Kashina was reacting. Naruto, there's a reason why we're telling you about Jinchkriki. 
he said, as his smile fell, and he looked serious. Do you know what happened to the Kipi 15 years ago? He asked curiously. Naruto gave him a look. I have a very good memory, but not that good. I just know it attacked, and I know you defeated it. He replied. Naruto 15 years ago, my wife was the Jinchkriki of the Kikbi. The seal that held it back broke, and it rampaged across the village. In order to protect the village, the third Hokage gave his life in helping me seal the tailed beast. I split the Kikbi in half, and sealed its younger physical half back to my wife, something she volunteered to do with the yin half, the spiritual energy that governs imagination. That was sealed into you that very night. Minato informed me. That night, when I sealed the Yang half into Kashina, it saved her life, but it also crippled most of her chakra pathways, leaving her weakened, Minato said sadly, as he looked down. Naruto blinked a few times, as he glanced down, and gripped his stomach. Yin chakra is what is used to make Jinjutsu. I guess it explains why I have such a knack for it. He thought analytically. Huh. He sounded. Huh. Boruto repeated. All you could say is huh. He asked. Would you prefer that I cry? Did I yell? What do I demand? Naruto asked sarcastically, as he looked at the younger kid. I'm sure this is something you weren't expecting to hear. I'll let you go, and get your mind together, just know this is a great secret, I'm sure you know why. Minato said seriously, causing Naruto to nod. He blinked a few times, as Minato finalized his shinobi files, and handed the blonde some of the paper, before the teen left. Once Naruto was gone, Boruto looked at Minato. Um how come you didn't tell him that we're related? He asked. Minato sighed. I already told him I placed the burden like that on him. If he learns that I gave him up, as a child I don't know how he'd react. He admitted, as he looked down in shame. Kashina put a hand on his shoulder, and smiled. It'll be fine. She informed me. I hope so. Minato replied, with Kashina looking down too. After the attack on them during her pregnancy, and the Kikbi being subsequently being released by the Ichiha that attacked them. When he resealed the part of the Kikbi in Kashina, and into Naruto, Kashina's chakra pathways were almost destroyed. She was incredibly weakened. Even a Chunin could get the better of her, and along with the third Hokage dying, Sunade and Orochimaru being out of the village, and Jiraiya doing his finding himself thing. Minato was by himself protecting the village. He had to make tough decisions that could harm his family, and he had to choose between his family and the village. If any of the other villagers discovered he had a son, and he was a Jinchkriki, they would try to kill him or abduct him. And since Kashina was weakened, she couldn't protect him. If there was a situation where a village launched an attack on him, and his family, he would be forced to choose between his family, and the village. And he wasn't sure which one he was supposed to do. So he gave him up, and changed his surname to Uzumaki. It almost killed him, and Kashina to do it, but no one would know his connection to Minato if they did, which would lessen the chance of someone actually trying to kill him. The only people who actually know of his Jinchkriki were the shinobi that actually participated in the Kikbi's attack, and the civilians who were affected by it. They all regarded Naruto as a ticking time bomb, basically fearfully, and trying to keep their distance. But no one spoke about it, so the word didn't spread. So Minato and Kashina knew he was safe, and they were content with him living his life. But once they had Burrito, his younger brother, and Kashina steadily getting her strength back, and the shinobi forces steadily grew. Minato was confident he could protect his family and the village. But there was a problem now. They couldn't just say hey, we're your parents. We gave you up. Even though it was to protect you, it still doesn't change it. Love us. They knew that wouldn't go well. And they knew they couldn't force him back into the family, they didn't want their son to hate them. Minato sighed, as he looked down. It was either give him up, and let him live his life or keep him with us, and have him live his life in fear of what was in the shadows he thought to himself. And he wasn't going to just lock his kid inside his house, and hide him from society. That would be horrible for a child. If I am the enemy in my son's eyes for what happened I'll take it. He deserves better. He thought. A while later Naruto was walking down a sidewalk with a silver-gray haired teen walking with him. Ha, nice blue steel. Mercury said, as he looked at Naruto's ID picture. But mine's better. He added, while handing the card back to the blonde. Yeah because you're a douch that styles your hair, and all that stuff. Naruto said sarcastically. A, A, A Mercury said, as he glanced around. I don't style my hair. I work at it. He corrected me. You would get bonus points if I act like I care. Naruto asked with a wily smirk. You could. The silver-gray-haired teen replied. I'll pass. The blonde said, before he looked up. The industrial parts of the village are only a few kilometers away, right? He asked. Ah, uh, yeah. Mercury replied unsure, as he glanced at Naruto. You okay man? He asked. Yeah, yeah, and it's around 4 in the afternoon, right? Naruto questioned, getting a nod from his friend. HMPH, I guess my blade should be finished. He admitted, getting a look from Mercury. The blade? Mercury asked with a raised eyebrow. Did you request one to be made by that ninja shop place? He asked, not really knowing the name of it. 
No, the industrial plant, the same place their metal girders and steel wires melted and formed. Naruto replied, as he walked casually with a long thin box in his hand. Right, why? Mercury asked. You could see I convinced some of the workers there to forge a blade with ultra-high carbon steel. Steel that's used to cut through stone, industrial grade metals, and for supporting large buildings. Naruto said with a smirk, as he spun the thin brown box in between his fingers, and rested it on his shoulder. The blade I have in mind is going to be thin, and about a foot and a half long. I'll need it to be structurally stable and durable. He admitted. As they walked, Naruto rolled the long thin brown box a bit, before he used it as a makeshift cane. So, you have a demon thing sealed inside you. Mercury commented. I gotta admit. I didn't see that one coming. He admitted. Naruto gave him a look that said who do you think you're talking to? He knew very well that the news was a shock to him. He personally didn't see it coming, but he really didn't care enough to react. So can you use the thing's power or something? Mercury asked. It'd be pretty useful. He admitted. No shit. Naruto replied, before he smirked. If the kippy is inside me, it's probably the reason why my chakra is so untamed. He said, before he glanced down and thought. That would mean that my body is naturally assimilating its chakra. That could mean that it's linked to my body and soul, if I can communicate with it, it could be very useful. He trailed off. A giant ass demon fox that almost decimated one of the great villages Mercury said. Oh please, Mr. Naruto. Please don't kill us with your demonic powers. He said mockingly. Ugh, shut up. Naruto replied with a sigh, getting a smirk from the silver gray haired teen. A half an hour or so later, Naruto and Mercury were walking through a large industrial area. The place smelt like burnt metal and plastic, along with coal, fire, and sweat. Mercury glanced at the glowing scarlet liquid metal that was in large stone containers, along with people working on them. They Mercury sounded, as he made a face. The two continued forward until they reached the colder part of the factory, where the metal was smelted, hardened, and shaped into their useful forms. Eventually the two were stopped by a man. What do you think you're doing here? He asked gruffly. We're here for order, Naruto began, as he held his box, and smirked. 115. He added, before the man's pupils dilated. I see the man said unsure, as he glanced around. Come with me. He said, as he turned around, and dumbly walked forward. I wish I could hypnotize people. Mercury muttered. PFFT, no you don't. You'd rather read manga. Naruto replied dryly. You're not wrong. He said with a nod. After a few minutes, Naruto and Mercury stopped, as the man stopped in front of a few other workers. He yelled orders to the other workers, before one of them left, and eventually came back. The man held a wooden case, and handed it to their boss, who then handed it to Naruto. Mercury glanced at the hypnotized people, before he looked back to Naruto, to see he was opening the wooden case. Naruto reached into the case, and pulled out a silver sword, before he tossed the wooden case aside. He held the silver sword by the hilt, which seemed to be a dark grey crook handle. Altogether the sword was 46 centimeters long or around a foot and a half. The sword's blade was around 2 and a half centimeters wide. They chum pH, made out of ultra-high carbon steel, along with a titanium silicon carbide coating. Naruto said, as he looked at the blade, and smirked. The sword had a similar size, and dimensions to a wakizashi. He rolled the sword, and held the crook handle over the back of his hand. Naruto held his long thin box up, and opened it up. He turned, and shook it a bit, before an object fell out of it. Mercury looked at Naruto weirdly. As he looked at the object he pulled out. It was an umbrella. It had eight ribs which held up a black fabric canopy. On the top of the canopy, it was elaborately decorated in lace-like fabric. Mostly around the middle of the canopy it was dark orange, which seemed to be arranged in unique looking tribal symbols at the edges, were red-colored tribal sigils. But what was unusual about it was the end of it, it was about an inch and a half longer than a normal umbrella, and it seemed to be hollow, being around 9.7 millimeters in diameter, and it seemed to have two slots on the side. Naruto glanced down at his sword, before he slid the blade into the shaft of the umbrella, and it fit perfectly. Mercury watched, as Naruto twirled the umbrella around his finger, but seemed to have some trouble at first, like it was heavier or something. After a twirl, Naruto smirked, as he opened up the umbrella, and rested it over his shoulder. That's Kindige. Mercury said, as he crossed his arms. Yud Naruto said, as he shook his head. This isn't the Dark Ages, have some respect. He said with an eye roll. Aha. Uh -huh. Mercury said uncaringly, as he glanced at the umbrella. So did you spruce that thing up, or not? He asked. Naruto held the umbrella at the center of its mass, as he glanced at the end of the umbrella which seemed to be a muzzle break, before he looked at Mercury's greaves. You could say something like that. He added. He glanced at the dark orange and red tribal designs on his umbrella. Some could say he stylized his own Fuenjutsu seals, not only would no one be able to recognize them as Fuenjutsu. They also looked good. But the Fuenjutsu's main focus was to seal the kinetic energy of attacks. 
it can basically negate every physical attack, such as Tijutsu, Ninjutsu, and Kinjutsu. It could also make every water, earth, wind, and to some extent lightning, and fire juices useless. As long as the attack requires a work or a force that's needed to move an object, and accelerates that object at a velocity. The few Ninjutsu Rei Naruto integrated into the entire canopy of his umbrella, could seal that kinetic energy. Along with the fact that the fabric that makes the canopy is fire retardant, and is waved in a way that disperses electrical currents. Though that kinetic energy has to go somewhere. Naruto thought with a smirk, as he and Mercury walked out of the factory. All I have to do is filter all that kinetic energy into one funnel so to speak, and I can turn all my opponent's attacks against them. He thought, as he gripped the crook handle to his umbrella tighter. Wanna get some ramen? Naruto asked, as he glanced at his friend, only to get a smirk from Mercury. And, our friends will be paying. He added, as he pulled out a few wallets from the factory workers, getting a whiter smirk from the silver-gray-haired teen. In the middle of the day, Naruto was sitting at a desk with a wily smirk on his face. He had a foot propped up on a desk, and was leaning back, while spinning his umbrella. The only problem with his umbrella was the fact that since it absorbed kinetic energy, it was a bitch to move. It was a good workout he suppose, since not only did it charge up his umbrella, it also got increasingly harder to move. Can you stop that a male voice said, causing Naruto to stop spinning his umbrella, and glance to his side. He saw a boy about two years younger than him, with raven black hair, a dark blue shirt, and light gray shorts. He seemed to be breathing a bit, as he hid the lower part of his face. I could, yes. Naruto admitted, as he spun the umbrella again. But if I listened to you, it would be unfair to all of the people I've callously ignored. He said with a shrug, though the shameless smile he had on his face gave away how he really felt. Sasuke ignored him, as he looked forward. He honestly held no opinion of Naruto. Like him, he seemed to hold the other one of Shinobi in high regard. Sasuke could tell Naruto was closed off from everyone else, and he seemed to not really care about the children. Like if he knew them or not, it really mattered. That was something Sasuke could agree with. Naruto looked forward to it too. Of course he knew about Sasuke. The prodigy Uchiha, the last Uchiha, the guy who sat and liked to brood a bit, Naruto knew about it, and thought the guy was alright. Well is alright, as a kid who watched the murder of his family, his clan, and was tormented by his brother could be. Naruto thought the kid's closed off personality was a natural reaction, and he knew the boy wanted revenge, it was only natural. He wasn't stupid enough to think highly of himself. If he had a family, and it was killed before his eyes, he would want justice. The fact that his definition of justice would be to kill the person who killed his family, the same way he killed them. Well, if he judged Sasuke for his vendetta, he would be a hypocrite. Naruto leaned forward, and glanced at Sasuke, and cleared his throat quietly. A word of advice you could say, Mr. Uchiha Naruto began, before he glanced around, and then looked at the Uchiha. I know your story. I am a few years older than you. He admitted. I don't want your pity. Sasuke said coolly, as he glared at the teen with black eyes. I'm not giving you pity, I just want to tell you something. Naruto said, as he leaned closer towards the boy. Look for him, look for your personal vengeance if I was in that situation, I would believe it was my right to accomplish. You have the right to kill the man that killed your family. You, and I Naruto began. We both know we shouldn't say we shouldn't be punished for what we would do, but we both know in that situation. We would have no choice. He trailed off, as he looked forward. Naruto held his hand out, as the Fujutsu sigil on his palm gleamed a dark red. Sasuke glanced at it, before he looked at Naruto curiously. You and I are human, so go on, and do your revenge. Bring him to justice. Others might try to convince you, to threaten you to stop. But Naruto said, as he looked at the sigil on his palm, as it gleamed, with it giving off heat. Vengeance is human nature, to go against it, is to go against you. He finished. Hey Chen, I already knew that. Sasuke said, as he glanced forward again. Naruto looked forward, and smirked. While he found Sasuke's brooding personality annoying, he really couldn't care less. He regarded Sasuke, and his attitude with the same enthusiasm, as if someone would tell him cereal was on sale. Good for Sasuke, I don't give a shit about him or cereal. He thought. Hey. Move your ass. I want to sit there. A female voice yelled, causing Naruto to blink, and turn to his side. He noticed a girl with pink hair, and green eyes glaring at him, as she held her fist. Ha. Huh? Naruto sounded, as he looked at Sakura. I have no idea what I'm talking about. He said uncaringly. Sakura's eyes twitched, as she held her fist. You're annoying. She yelled, as she went to hit him. As soon as she pivoted, and sent her fist towards his head, Naruto raised an eyebrow, and poked her in the armpit with his umbrella. She froze, well. Technically her arm froze, as he hit the axillary nerve in her armpit. You know, somewhere out there is a tree, tirelessly producing oxygen so you can breathe. Naruto said, as he pulled his umbrella back, and smirked wily, as it opened up, and rested it on his shoulder. I think you owe it an apology. He added, as he looked forward. Why does he have an umbrella? 
though a lot of the genin, before they shirked it off, Naruto had a reputation of being weird, and not really giving a shit about what people thought of him. A few minutes later, Iruka was giving a speech to the class. Starting today, all of you are real shinobi. But you're still genin. The hard journey that lies ahead has just started. Now you'll soon get the missions to help the village. So today we'll create three man teams, and each team will have a jonin sensei. You'll follow your sensei's instructions in order to successfully complete your missions. Iruka said, as he held up some paper. So we tried to balance it out before we start, Naruto Uzumaki, due to the odd number of students passing this year, we've had to move some things around. With your hem, age, and skill set, you'll be moved to an already formed team. It also helps that the jonin in question seemed to ask for Jinjutsu-specific students, who had potential in the field. He said. While I hope my jonin's a good teacher, I wouldn't want to burden you with coming back. Naruto said with a shameless smile. Hey, he he right. Iruka sounded nervously, as he glanced at Mizuki, and shrugged. Naruto leaned back, and began to twirl his umbrella, as Iruka informed the other genin of their team placements. Okay, this afternoon we'll introduce your jonin senseis. Until then, take a break. Iruka said with a smile, as genin walked out of the room, Iruka stopped Naruto. What? He asked. Your sensei told me to tell you that you have to meet your team at the building across from this one. Iruka informed me. Ha, cool then. Naruto said, as he walked out of the room, and grinned to himself. Thank god, I don't have to see him again. Iruka thought with relief. Naruto crouched down before he jumped up towards a two-story building. He had one hand in his pocket, while he twirled his umbrella in his other hand, as he walked up the horizontal wall. Despite the fact that he was a newly genin, Mercury wasn't. He was able to learn while walking, and taught it to Naruto, mostly to help him with his abysmal chakra control. It took almost a week to get this down. Naruto thought with annoyance, remembering the training he forced himself through to actually learn how to walk on walls. You took your sweet ass time. Mercury said, as he leaned against a railing with his arms crossed. Hey. Don't be mean to our new team member. A female voice said to the gray silver haired team. Naruto looked at Mercury, before he noticed his friend's annoyed look. He turned, and looked to the other end of the roof, and noticed another person there. It was a young woman, around 19, just a few years older than he, and Mercury were. The young girl had pale skin, along with long wavy raven black hair, with her eyes being a deep shade of emerald. She wore a sleeveless light purple shirt with a dark purple scarf around her neck, along with a pair of black pants, and black low heeled boots. Hilo. She said happily, as she smiled cheerfully at Naruto. I hope we can become great friends, sweetie. She said in a friendly way. Naruto looked at the girl who was almost three or four years older than him, before he looked at Mercury incredulously. Is she kidding? He asked. No silly, I'm Emily Gray. Ha, bad joke. She said with a smile. Right Naruto sounded, before he smirked. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, I'm sure we'll get along great. He said in a calming manner. That could almost come off, as charming. Great. Emily replied happily. Emily's an interesting name. Naruto commented. Yes, well it's the name my mother gave me after all. She said cheerfully, though it did seem a bit forced. Yes. Naruto replied with a nod, as he glanced over the building, and glanced at the horizon. Oh sorry, Mercury told me about your parents. Sweetie. Emily said happily, even though she was apologizing. I don't want sympathy. Naruto said, as he looked at the amber-eyed girl. I just want something out of life, I really don't care about the past. He admitted. And don't call me sweetie. He said with a frown. Alright, sweetie. Emily said with a happy tone. Naruto glanced at Mercury, to see he had a face that said don't bother. He tried to get her to talk normally, and it really didn't work. I hope we become good friends. Despite Mercury's off-putting closed-off demeanor, and off-putting comments, I do place a fair amount of thrust into him. Emily admitted, as she walked up towards Naruto. I have to admit, it does sound interesting. Naruto said with a wily smirk. So what is it exactly that you do? He questioned. Well I'm a doctor. Emily said happily. So you're a medic ninja? Naruto asked. Oh no, I'm a doctor ninja. She corrected me. Is there a difference? He asked unsure. Well, a medic makes people more comfortable, as they die. Emily said cheerfully. I'm like that, but I save people from dying. She informed me. Alright then. Naruto said with a nod, as he looked at the girl, before he began to twirl his umbrella, and rested it on his shoulder, while it opened up. Emily tilted her head, as she looked at the weapon, before her eyes landed on the end of it. She noticed the vent slots that seemed to be at the end of the umbrella, along with it being hollowed out. She glanced down at Mercury's boots, remembering seeing them in action. I see, do you use the chemically propelled weapon that Mercury has? She asked, as she looked at Naruto. The blonde in question looked a bit surprised, before he looked at Mercury. Yeah, I forgot to mention. She's incredibly smart. She has an IQ of 240. Mercury informed me seriously. It was one of the reasons why she was still alive. 
He couldn't put her in a situation to be killed in action. He also got his ass healed by her a few dozen times, so he really didn't want to kill the person who pulled his ass out of the fire. Ah, it's nothing. Emily said, with a slight blush on her face. No, no, it's not. Naras have incredibly high IQs, and well I believe IQs are bullshit Naruto said. Because it makes people with high IQs arrogant and condescending, and it makes a bar for people with low IQs, believing they can't get smarter. That is no doubt an intriguing state of mind. He commented, as he looked at the emerald eyed girl. Emily blushed a bit, being at the center of attention. Though she usually was happy with how she acted, that was more unintentional. Since there really is no point in lying to you, Naruto said, as he glanced at his umbrella. He opened his umbrella, and reached up to where the stretcher of the umbrella stopped. He did something with the metal near them, causing the top half of the umbrella to come off. He put the sheath part of the sword down, and held up the end part of the umbrella which was only 10 inches long. Under the end was a seal along the bottom. It's actually very simple, instead of Mercury's weapons which require recoil, and a hammer to create a tiny spark inside a case. Mine uses my chakra to simulate a spark Naruto trailed off, as he seemed to take out a cartridge out of the cylindrical barrel. It's basically a brass casing that's about 1.2 inches long, filled with a mixture of sulfur, charcoal, and potassium nitrate. My chakra ignites the chemical explosion, and launches the projectile that has around a 357 inch diameter, and around 125 grams, at velocities of 1600 feet per second. Naruto explained with a shrug. So it's only one shot type deal, used for a quick killer cripple. Emily said. You could say something like that. Naruto said with a wily smirk, as he put the 357 round back into the end part of the umbrella. In actuality I have a lot of rounds in there. Naruto thought. There were actually three seals at the beginning of the barrel. They were on a time delay. When he channeled chakra into his sword, it would move up the blade, which actually touched the tip of its blade at the igniter seal. Once the black powder ignited, and the projectile fired, a seal on the left side of the barrel would seal up the empty cartridge, while at the same time, the seal on the right would release another cartridge, which was filled, and ready to fire, along with cold air which cooled the barrel. A third seal along the barrel was something else. It released a longer cartridge, but it didn't fire a projectile. It released a thin aluminium case holding a magnesium-based pyrotechnic charge. It will create a contained explosion inside the barrel of the umbrella, which was made out of, and lined with carbon steel, and titanium, the barrel could contain the explosion, and the heat from it without warping the barrel, along with seals being integrated into the metal barrel, and not paper, they weren't affected. The explosion would then be funneled down the barrel, and emit an intensely loud bang of 170-180 decibels, and a blinding flash of more than 1 million candela within a few feet in front of the barrel, sufficient to cause immediate flash blindness, deafness, tinnitus, and inner ear disturbance to the person or persons Naruto was aiming the barrel at. After Naruto fixed his umbrella he rested it on his shoulder, and slowly spun it, as he blocked the sunlight. Emily was glancing off in thought, as she smiled to herself, and Mercury had his arms crossed, and looking up at the sky. Naruto didn't really mind telling Emily about the one ability of his umbrella, out of the other things it did. The built-in sword, the flashbangs, the kinetic energy absorption and augmentation, the more than one shot it had. The fact the kinetic energy absorption the umbrella had, made the weapon recoilless. Along with his Jinjutsu and Tajutsu, he could integrate all his attacks together, and once he learned Kinjutsu. I'm going to be so awesome. Naruto thought with a smirk. I'm curious. Emily admitted, as she looked at Naruto. Why do you have an umbrella? She asked curiously. Naruto smiled playfully, as his umbrella blocked the bright sun rays. It keeps me cool. He began, as he reached up with his other hand, and brushed his hair back. And hot at the same time. He said shamelessly, before his hair became messy again. Haha, I like that. Emily said happily, with a giggle. See Naruto said, as he looked at Mercury. She thinks I'm funny. He said. Well, that makes two of you. Mercury replied, as he looked up. You know, words hurt. Naruto said with fake sadness, but with the fact he was very good at acting, lying, and manipulating in general, Emily thought it was real. Apologize Mercury. Emily said seriously, as her cheerful tone vanished. Wait, what? Mercury asked, as he glanced at her. Yeah Mercury, apologize. Naruto said, with a small smirk. You Mercury began, before he stopped when he noticed Emily's glare, and that caused him to stop. There was another reason why he never attempted to get rid of her. She scared the hell out of him when she was angry. And it wasn't the bullshit oh, she's going to beat me up, no, he was scared for his safety, and life. Emily had some severe psychopathic tendencies that even made Mercury uneasy. Once on a mission, she tortured an enemy Jonin, and used her surgical equipment to do it, and she was singing happily while she tortured the enemy Shinobi. And she was able to break the Jonin, something their sensei couldn't do. That is why he was scared of her. I apologize. He said through gritted teeth. Emily smiled cheerfully, while Naruto smirked behind her, which just riled Mercury up. 
He knew Naruto was going to do his mind games with Emily. He just loved to cause chaos and mischief. If anyone messes with you, sweetie, just tell your big sister. She said happily. You're like, only a few years older than me. Naruto said dryly, as he looked at the emerald eyed girl. Hey, well, what can you do? Emily asked in an endearing way, before the three waited. Doc, when is she going to get here? Mercury asked angrily. I don't know, but I would hazard a guess, and assume she's watching us from afar, seeing how our team is interacting. Emily said happily. That's probably true, Kanoha, and their teamwork stuff. Naruto said with a sigh, as he sat on the edge of the building with his black umbrella over his shoulder. Yeah Emily said, before she looked at Naruto with narrowed amber eyes. I am well aware of your ambivalence towards the village. She informed me. What does it even mean? Mercury asked. She means apathy. Naruto informed me. Oh that makes sense. Mercury muttered, as he nodded to himself. And well, I really don't mind. Emily admitted, surprising Naruto a bit. I really don't care for it, I know it's here, and I'm willing to protect it. But I'm apolitical she began. More like immoral. Mercury muttered, causing Emily to glance at him. I really don't care about the territories or the beliefs of people in general. They hold no meaning to me. I've always been on the move, but I'm curious, and want to learn about places. Emily admitted happily, causing Naruto to nod, and Mercury to roll his eyes. About everything. She thought with a smile. A few minutes later the sound of shifting wind grabbed the three's attention. In front of them was a young woman with straight purple hair reaching down to her waist, brown eyes, and a shade of red lipstick. She seemed to be wearing the usual Kanoha Janin attire, along with some extra armor, along with a sword strapped to her back. Sensei finally. Mercury said with a sigh, as he looked at the purple-haired woman. Sorry, I was a bit caught up. Ikao admitted, as she rubbed the back of her head. Hey, with him? Mercury asked, causing the jonin to cough a bit. Ahem, so you're Naruto Uzumaki? Ikao asked, as she looked at the blonde boy. I sure hope so. I wouldn't want more devilishly handsome versions of me running around. Naruto said with a shameless smirk, as he rested his umbrella on his shoulder. Quite. Ikka replied. Well most of the jonin might react negatively with that type of attitude, she had been the leader of the team that had Mercury on it, and his attitude was hard to adjust to. But once she got used to it, it was just one of those quirks you find irritating about your friends, but you put up with. Emily smirked at that, she was just going to love this guy. So what are we doing today, sensei? Are we going to have a mission? She asked curiously, with a happy tone in her voice. No, not today. Ikao answered, before she glanced at the three teenagers. We'll learn about each other today, for our newest member. She said, as she looked at Naruto. I am Ikao Yuzuki. Can you tell us about yourself? She asked. Naruto raised an eyebrow, as he closed his umbrella, and idly spun it on his fingers. What did you want to know? He asked curiously. How about your likes, dislikes, your dreams for the future, and things like that? Ikao said with a small smile. Though Naruto said, as he glanced down, and sighed. Well, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. I have no desire to tell you my likes or dislikes dreams for the future he said, as he glanced off, and thought. I'm not really a guy with much of a plan, but I guess I want to hone the skills I have, and improve upon the ones that I suck at. And well I have a few hobbies. He answered with a shrug. Emily smiled at him. What a positively lovely ambiguous introduction. She said cheerfully. It got smirked a bit at the introduction, as she shook her head. Ha, I bet Kakashi Senpai would love to meet you. She mused, before she pushed herself off the railing. I'm sure you three have been having a good time getting to know each other while I was away, tomorrow we'll have a training session. I want to know how well you all work together in sync. She informed me bluntly. She already put Mercury and Emily through the session originally. There would be no point in trying to hide the purpose of it. It would be redundant, and well, kinda stupid. She reached into her vest, and pulled out a small scroll, before she handed it to Naruto. The details of the session will be on here, try not to be late. Ikgao said kindly. Of course. Naruto said, as he grabbed onto the scroll, and put it in his pocket, before he began to casually hold his umbrella by a center of mass. Mercury has told me good things about you. I know you'll be a great addition to the team. Ikgao said, before she vanished in swirling leaves. Ha, hey, she totally wants me. Mercury said with a confident smile. She has a boyfriend. Emily said with narrowed eyes, as she shook her head in disapproval. Things change. He informed me. Naruto glanced at the area where Jonin stood, before he turned, and looked at Mercury, and Emily. Can you tell me about our sensei? He questioned. Mercury gave him a look. Why didn't you ask Ikka sensei about her? He asked dryly, while Emily looked at Naruto curiously. The blonde leaned to his side, as he pressed his umbrella against the ground, and used it, as a type of support. I found that when you want to know the truth about someone, that someone is probably the last person you should ask. Naruto said dryly. Emily smirked, as she reached up to her nose, before she blinked, and rubbed her forehead. 
Ha, that's some words of the wise type stuff, I love it. She said happily. Thanks. Naruto said, before he glanced around. Emil smiled, as she patted the blonde on the shoulder. I'll tell you about her. She said cheerfully, before she smirked, getting a wily smirk from Naruto in return. A few hours later, Naruto was hiding in the trees with a frown on his face. In the clearing he was looking in, he saw Ikgao standing around, wielding her sword, sparring against a sickly looking man. Naruto scowled, as he studied them. Their movements, their stances, their muscle twitches, the way they pivoted, and how they fought. Um hey began, before he coughed a bit. Yeah, I know. It's my new student. Ikgao said, as she sparred with Heid. Naruto Uzumaki was it. The kippy container. Heid asked, before he coughed. Yeah, he's an interesting kid. I'm pretty sure he wants to know about Kenjutsu. She admitted, as the two clashed blades. Mercury mentioned it I believe. Ikgao informed me. Heid smirked, as he moved back, and blocked her blade creating some sparks. A team with all orphans. He commented, as he smiled. That's really kind. He added. It's not charity, they're all incredibly skilled. Even with Naruto's previous scores, it was all because of his bad chakra control that he failed, and I'll chalk it up to the kick B. Emily is incredibly smart, along with surpassing this generation's Mednin she trailed off. Well it's no surprise who her mother was even if she was adopted. Hei said with a shrug. And then there's Mercury. Despite his attitude, he's well versed in Taijutsu, with a style I haven't seen. Ikka commented, though Taijutsu wasn't her forte. His strength and speed are above that of a genin, and could give a chunin a run for his money. And his chakra is very similar to someone I just can't place the name. She commented, before she blocked a strike from Heid. And Naruto, from what I hear, is incredibly skilled in Jinjutsu. Despite not knowing any, since the students only get theory, and the mechanics of them. But he seemed to be able to use that knowledge, and create micro Jinjutsu, along with sleight of hand, to pull off some surprising results. She said, before she smirked. I can just imagine if I introduced him to Kuranai or even gave him some more advanced mechanics. She said. Ha, a prodigy in medical ninjutsu, taijutsu, and jinjutsu, along with the jinjutsu one wanting to use kenjutsu I have to say, you have a really fun sounding team. Hey, commented, before he coughed. Thanks. She replied, before the two clashed blades. After a few minutes, Naruto watched, as Hei left the clearing, as their spar seemed to be done. He glanced at Ikao, and blinked, and she was gone. Naruto froze, before he noticed several leaves falling next to him. You know, it's implied to sneak up on people. Naruto said, as he glanced to his side, and saw Ikka right next to him. I could say the same. She replied, before she narrowed her eyes. What are you doing here? She questioned. Naruto looked nervous, as she looked at him with narrowed eyes. W well I was, just just trying to see how you fought. Why you know, for the test tomorrow. He said, as he stuttered out nervously, with some sweat dripping from his forehead. Naruto, you don't have to lie. If you want to learn Kenjutsu, I'm not opposed to teaching you. Ikka said with a smile. But what if I fail the test tomorrow? He asked nervously. I'd still teach you, that's a promise. She informed, before she and Naruto hopped out of the tree, and landed on the ground. I can't teach you right now, I'm a bit exhausted. Ikka informed me seriously. After the test, I'll help you train in Kenjutsu. Alright. She asked, getting a slow nod from the blonde. Thanks and say. Naruto said with a slight smile, getting a smile from the purple-haired Jonin, before she vanished in speed. Naruto twirled his umbrella on his finger, before he opened it up, and rested the shaft of it on his shoulder, and smirked. The gift of a good liar is making people think you suck at it. He thought to himself, as he glanced around at the forest with his umbrella shadowing him. Well this has certainly been interesting. Naruto thought to himself, as he smirked. In the woods, a teenager with silver-gray hair stood with his arms crossed, and leaned against a tree. He wore baggy gray sweepings, and a sleeveless muscle shirt. In his hands he held a book with Ichu Ichu Paradise, as the title. The sound of grunting came from his side, as Naruto had his arms on one of the long thin branches of the tree, and was doing pull-ups. He wore a black vest, and gray sweatpants too, with his legs curled up, and, as he held a large weight with his knees. As Naruto did his weighted pull-ups, Mercury turned a page, and read from the book. So, now that we're shinobi, what do we do now? He asked. Ugh why are you asking me? Naruto said, in between pull-ups, while he gritted his teeth. The weight he was using to harden his workout was around a hundred pounds, and his arms burned like they were on fire. I don't know. Aren't you the man with the plan? Mercury asked, as he glanced at the blonde, before he went back to reading. Do I look like a guy with a plan? Naruto forced out, as he breathed. I just do things. He admitted. You manipulate, and hypnotize people. You're stronger than me if you do that jinjutsu, and sleight of hand crap. Mercury replied, as he turned another page. And you've hit the 50 mark. He added, just before a loud thud echoed, as Naruto let the weight fall. Naruto let go of the tree, and sighed in relief, as he let his arms fall, and relax. Damn. 
he said, as he shook his arms. Just because I have power, doesn't mean I have to be a dick with it. Naruto said dryly. There doesn't need to be some grandiose master plan where I wipe out the village, or where I leave, or where I take it over. He stated, as he rolled his shoulders. I just want to do stuff, experience things, and learn why the hell I had a seal on my stomach. Now I know. Naruto said with a shrug, before he rolled his arms again, and hopped up, and grabbed onto the branch again. Aha, and why are you doing this again? Mercury asked dryly, as he turned another page again. Well strength is good, and all, we do use our chakra to enhance our abilities. He committed. 2 times 2, is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Naruto replied, as he pulled himself up, and turned, before he wrapped his legs around the branch, and began to do inverted sit-ups. Am I supposed to pretend I know what that means? Mercury asked sarcastically. He say chakra enhances our abilities, doubles our strength, speed, and agility. What if our bodies were at the peak of human strength, speed, and agility, and they were doubled? Naruto asked. You do realize that it takes years of dedicated training to even think of getting to the peak of human condition. Mercury said in his usual laid-back way, as he turned another page. I'm not aiming for that, I'm just saying I want to be as strong as I can get at my base, before I use chakra to enhance my strength. Naruto replied, before he started his inverted sit-ups again. I guess you need all the help you could get. Mercury commands offhandedly. Naruto hopped down off the branch, and glared at the silver-gray-haired teen. What the hell's that supposed to mean? He asked angrily, before he calmed himself down. We both know I'm physically stronger than you. He replied uncaringly. PFFT don't remind me. Naruto said, as he glanced around the woods. Okay, two sets of 50 weighted pull-ups, two sets of 75 inverted sit-ups. I think one more set of each should do it for now. He said to himself, before one nodded. Okay he trailed off, as he lifted his arms up, and exposed his sides. I'm ready. He added. Mercury shook his head, and sighed, as he put his book in his ninja pouch, which was under the sash over his belt. He knelt down, and picked up a 2x4, before he shook his head. Ugh, the things you do to get stronger he mumbled. It'll be hard to fight an opponent when I'm blinded by pain from the first attack. Hit with all you got. Naruto said, as he tightened his muscles, and gritted his teeth. Alright, if you say so. Mercury said with a sigh, as he reared the piece of wood back, and swung forward. An hour later, Naruto and Mercury were walking in the training area they were told to meet at. Naruto was scowling, as he used his umbrella, as a makeshift cane to walk, with bruises on his body. You're still pissed aren't you? Mercury asked with a smirk. What normal person hits his best friend with a damn 2x4? Naruto questioned. You asked me to. Mercury stated. Yeah, why would you listen? He asked with a scowl. Despite wanting to build up a tolerance to pain, it was a natural reaction to get upset and angry at what caused it. Well to him anyway. Hey. A happy female voice announced, causing Naruto and Mercury to turn and see a young woman with long wavy raven black hair and emerald eyes, wearing a sleeveless purple shirt with a darker purple scarf around her neck and light gray pants, along with black low heeled boots. Oh no, what happened to you? Emily asked with white eyes as she looked at Naruto. She quickly went up to him and forced him to sit. Sit, I'll take care of this. Who did this? Emily questioned seriously. Ugh, this stupid girl. I made one comment about her forehead, and she went ballistic. It was my fault I provoked her. Naruto lied seamlessly. Emily nodded, as she held her hand up, and it was engulfed in green light. She put her hand on Naruto's chest, and began to heal the wounds, but to her surprise, she already noticed most of the wounds were almost healed. Such a unique form of regeneration is this the power the kick beholds. She thought, as she glanced down at Naruto's stomach. You are such an interesting person Naruto. She thought with a smirk that might have been considered evil. Now sweetie, relax, and let me help you. Emily said happily. Call me sweetie, and I'll stab you. Naruto said irritated. He, oh I would just love to psychoanalyze you. Emily admitted cheerfully, while she applied medical ninjutsu to the blonde. After a few minutes, Naruto was fine. He stood up, and was casually spinning his black umbrella. Mercury was a few feet away from him, leaning against a tree reading a book. In front of Naruto was Emily, who was only about 2 or 3 inches taller than him. Naruto and Emily stared down. Naruto's dark blue eyes stared into Emily's intense emerald one. Alright, one two three he said, as he put their hands forward. Paper beats rock. He said, as his hand was open, and Emily's was a fist. One, two, three. Emily said, as she chose paper, and Naruto chose scissors. One, two, three. She announced, as she chose rock, and he chose paper. The two continued a few times, but Naruto just stared into her eyes, as he continued to be a step ahead of her. He, this is so amazing. It's like you can read my mind. Emily said happily, as Naruto seemed to almost casually beat her in rock, paper, scissors. Maybe I can. Naruto said with a shameless smile, as he opened his umbrella, and rested it on his shoulder. Haha, you're right. 
Emily replied with a smile, while Mercury rolled his eyes and turned the page. Want proof? He asked with a smirk as he stepped towards the 19-year-old girl. Sure, sweetie. She replied. Okay, focus, Naruto said, as he put his finger up to the side of his head. You're thinking, can this handsome devil really read my mind? If he does, how will I ever be able to ask him out? He said with a wily smirk. Emily smiled as she reached out and ruffled Naruto's hair. Am I right? He asked. He, you'll never know. Emily said cheerfully. I see you three are all here. A female voice said, causing Mercury to push himself off the tree, and Naruto and Emily to turn and see Ikao entering the area. The training session will begin once you attack, once we start she began, as she looked up for a moment. Until the middle of the day we will fight, once I recognize your three's abilities to fight together and sync well, I call the session. Ikao instructed. Naruto and Mercury shared a glance, before the blonde looked at Emily. Don't worry about me, silly. I'm not much of a fighter, but I do have a few tricks. She said cheerfully, as she waved the blonde off. In an instant Naruto and Mercury charged forward and attacked. Naruto swung his black umbrella at Jonin before she leaned back and let it pass by before she kicked him in the stomach. As Naruto doubled over, Mercury was jumping over him and went to drop kick it down in the chest, only for her to block it with her forearm, but the explosion from his greaves caused her to frown. As Mercury fell back, he grabbed Naruto's umbrella and tossed it back to him. Naruto grabbed onto the umbrella and jumped up right next to Mercury and sent his knee out to hit Jonin. Ikao blocked his knee with her own, before he went to hit her in the side of the face with his umbrella, only for her to block it with her forearm. With his other arm Naruto went to punch her, only for her to grab onto it, before Naruto tried to kick her. But she turned and threw him, using his momentum against him. Just as Naruto was thrown to the side, Mercury successfully kicked Ikao in the chest this time, sending her back. Ikao rolled herself up, and bent her arm back to reach for her sword, only for Mercury to stretch his left leg up, and hook it around her arm, before he jumped up, and twisted, and then kicked her in the face. When Mercury flipped himself off of the Jonin, Naruto came up behind her, swept low, and kicked her. But, as soon as he did, she vanished in a cloud of smoke. As soon as she was out of their sight, Naruto, and Mercury went back to back. Where's Emily? Naruto asked. If I know her well enough, she's probably setting up an elaborate trap or something. Mercury replied or something. The blonde said dryly, before he noticed Ikgao moving towards him. I've got visuals. He admitted. Oh? So do I Mercury replied with a sigh, as he saw Ikgao charging at him. Naruto and Mercury charged forward, attacking their individual Ikgao enemies. As she attached Mercury, he turned and delivered a sidekick right towards her stomach, creating an explosion. Mercury made a face when he saw her survive it, thinking she was a shadow clone. But I doubt she'd willingly attack us when she knows our weapons have some terrible killing power. Along with the fact she's observing us, she wouldn't risk it. He thought, before he noticed the Ikgao clone he was fighting, had already drawn her sword, and was ready to stab him. Naruto umbrella. Mercury said, as he extended his hand, and moved back. He knew he was flexible, and could kick her, but he didn't want to give her the opportunity to cut his leg off. Naruto pulled away from his fight, and tossed his closed black umbrella at Mercury, with the silver-gray haired teen reaching out, and catching the umbrella by the crook handle. Mercury turned and leveled the end of the umbrella at Ikao, before a thunder crack echoed as a flash came from the end, and at almost 1,600 feet per second, a 125 gram projectile of metal tore through and out of Ikao, causing her to freeze before she vanished in a cloud of smoke. The Ikao in front of Naruto moved forward as she jumped up and sent a kick towards him. Naruto quickly turned and moved behind her before he wrapped his arms around her stomach and lifted her up and leaned back, slamming her into the ground. As she dispelled, Naruto got up and glanced around. Where's the original? Naruto questioned as he looked at Mercury, who tossed his umbrella back at him. I think I know. Mercury replied before he launched himself forward, using the explosion from his greaves to move forward. Naruto sighed as he grabbed his umbrella by its center of mass and followed. Emily glanced around as she walked forward. A few feet in front of her it gal appeared, causing her to stop. The clone I'm not sure if I should be offended. Emily said, as she tilted her head to the side, before she glanced out into the forest, and smirked. Come on out, it'll be fun. She said cheerfully, as she lifted her hand up, with a gleaming blue, when she activated a chakra scalpel. She stopped, before she heard the sound of the air shifting. Emily turned around, and quickly hooked her right leg around the left leg of the person that was behind her. She pushed the person down, and put her chakra scalpel right up to the person's neck. Whoa, 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 we're on the same side, remember? Naruto said, as he glanced down at the chakra scalpel at his throat. Naruto? Emily asked, before Naruto looked up, and his eyes narrowed. He reached forward, and wrapped his arms around Emily, before he rolled, with the area they were at was impaled by several dozen shuriken, seemingly from an activated trap. 
Emily looked up at Naruto with white emerald eyes, before she quickly grabbed into him, and rolled, avoiding more blades. When they stopped rolling, Emily was straddling Naruto. Oh ho, you such a naughty boy. Emily commented cheerfully. Ugh, yeah can you get off. You sort of kneeing me Naruto forced out, causing Emily to look down, and notice she was kneeing him in the crotch. Sorry. She said happily, as she quickly got off him. Naruto forced himself up, as he held his crotch. Phew, I need a sec. He muttered, as he slowly got up, and grabbed onto his umbrella. Sorry again. Emily said, as she noticed Naruto's pained look. It's fine. He was forced out. Kaden. Mkakik, no J-O-O-T-S-U fire release. Great fireball technique, the Ika clone announced, as she exhaled a moderate large ball of fire towards the two. Taijutsu, Chuck. Trap detection, moderately well let's see how they handle ninjutsu dot she thought, as the fireball raced towards the duo. Naruto wrapped an arm around Emily, and pulled her back, as he moved forward. He raised his other hand out, and leveled his umbrella at the fireball, before its canopy opened up. When the fireball collided with the umbrella, it seemed to have lost its integrity, and spread out, with the remaining fire moving around Naruto, and Emily. Man, you could say that Naruto began, but before he could make a pun, the Ika clone jumped back, and launched a Phoenix Age fire, launching dozens of smaller fireballs. One of the fireballs went down, and collided with the ground, creating a decent-sized explosion, causing Naruto, and Emily to jump, and evade. As Naruto landed in a crouch, he looked forward, and noticed several fireballs were flying towards him. He quickly thrust his right hand forward with the Funjutsu tribal style day on his palm gleaming red, before a fireball collided with his palm. Naruto grimaced, as he felt the heat from the fireball touch his skin, before the fireball vanished entirely. Moving his hand to the side, he caught another fireball, and then another. The blonde moved back, and smirked, as he felt a heat pulsating through his arms, and body. Naruto glanced down, and saw through his shirt, the Funjutsu A on the palms of his hands were glowing. As well as seemingly random Funjutsu symbols along his arms, biceps, and shoulders, that were able to be seen through his shirt sleeves. The Funjutsu ability to seal the Jutsus themselves, and hold them inside by body, where my chakra churns, and molds around it, mutating it to more volatile attacks. I'm such a genius. Naruto thought to himself, as he held up his hands. It was his workaround in Jutsu. His hands were illuminated by a deep fiery-like energy, with the tribal Funjutsu symbols along his arms getting more intense. Naruto thrust his hand at Ikao, launching a semi-solid almost liquid bolt of fire-like energy, looking like corrosive lava. Ikao flipped back, avoiding the lava-like energy. Naruto smirked, as he put his left hand on his right arm, before he swiped it down to his wrist. He gathered all the energy from Ikao's attack, and then sent it all right back at her, with his own chakra adding to the fun. The large bolt of lava-like energy collided with the ground near Ikao, creating a large explosion filled with volatile lava. What the hell is that? Ikao thought to herself, looking at the attack. She had seen sealing techniques that could seal jutsus. But that required scrolls, and a complex yunjutsu, and it wasn't used to fire techniques back at the person. To be able to absorb, and redirect jutsus interesting. She thought with a smirk, before she turned to the side. Just as Ikao turned, Emily went to stab her in the back with a chakra scalpel. Ikao grabbed onto Emily's extended arm, and used the medic's momentum against her, as she tried to flip her over. But, as Ikao flipped her over, Emily twisted herself, and wrapped her legs around man's arm, and used her weight to bring her down. When the two were on the ground, Emily held onto Ikao's arm, before she spun herself, and quickly got up. Emily grabbed onto Jonin's leg, and went to sever the tendons, only for Ikao to turn, and kick her right in the face. When Emily fell to the ground, the Metnin kicked out, and wrapped both her legs around Ikao's leg, before she twisted herself. When Ikao was brought to her knees, Emily grabbed onto her hand, and pulled it towards her, as she kept the Jonin on her knees with one foot, and put her other foot on the side of Ikao's neck. As Emily pulled Ikao's arm, while pushing her foot down on Jonin's neck, and the back of her leg, the Mednin formed a chakra scalpel, and went to attack. Emily stabbed Ikao in the chest with a chakra scalpel, causing the purple-haired woman to dissipate in a cloud of smoke. Emily pulled herself up, as she ran a hand through her messy raven black hair. She turned, and looked at Naruto, to see he was staring at her with some shock written on his face. He, I kinda got into it, I guess. Emily said happily, as she shrugged. That was hot Naruto thought to himself. He was the kinda guy that loved a girl who could kick ass, and be hot while doing it. Majin. Narakumi, no J-O-O-T-S-U demonic illusion. Hell viewing technique, Ikao muttered from inside the trees, as she looked at Naruto, and Emily. Emily looked around, as leaves seemed to blow around her. Emily Chan a female voice said, causing Emily to freeze, as she slowly turned around. Naruto glanced around, and raised an eyebrow. Hello there, girly boy. The gravely male voice said, causing Naruto to turn around, and tilt his head. Oh god, Naruto said with a scowl, as he looked forward. Coming out of the trees, was a clown. 
The clown had puffy red hair, white skin, a red nose, and elaborate clothes, while holding a lot of red balloons. I never should have seen that movie when I was five, he said to himself. Naruto looked at it before he rolled his eyes. I'm not afraid of you anymore, he replied. Nah, 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 we all know that you're afraid. I can taste it, the clown said with a smile. It's so delicious, he declared. PFFT, I've read your book. You're a chick, a female spider or some shit. Why the hell would I be afraid of a crossdresser? Naruto asked with a shameless smile. Ikgao moved out of the trees and went to disarm the two, moving up to Naruto first since he was the one with the obvious weapon. As soon as she reached out and touched him, Naruto shattered into glass. The jonin froze as she felt cold steel press itself against her collarbone and down to her stomach. Naruto stood behind her, pressing his sword against the front of her body. Sorry, but amateur hocus pocus like that won't work on me. Naruto said with a smirk. Ikgao looked forward. Then what about this one? She asked, before Naruto felt a blade get pushed against the back of his neck, with Ikgao in front of him turning to stone and mending back to the ground. I was just about to tell you the same thing. Ikgao said from behind him. Naruto coughed as he looked forward. Oh hey sensei. Heads up, you're going to feel like an asshole in 3-2, and he trailed off, before Ikgao felt a kunai blade press against her throat, a chakra scalpel against her chest, and a thin sword press against her stomach. Ah, yeah, yeah, there it is. He said with a smirk. Ikgao glanced to her sides, and noticed Mercury behind her, holding the kunai, Emily by her side, with the chakra scalpel, and Naruto with his sword pointed inward. Ikgao sounded, as she glanced at the three. You guys pass. She said, with the three pulling their weapons away from her. Ikgao observed the three, as they met up. Emily and Mercury weren't that good together. They always ended up splitting apart for their attacks. But Naruto seems to be able to work with them both on an individual level. Emily seems to like him, and Mercury seems to be close friends. She thought. Ugh, dude, what's your umbrella made out of? Mercury asked, as he rubbed his arm. Stuff. Naruto replied with a shrug. He didn't really want to go into the exact alloys his umbrella was made out of. Mostly because he didn't want people to start using tungsten carbide and ultra-high carbon steel for weapons. Whatever it is, that shit's fucking heavy. Mercury complained. PFFT, well I like to think it's made out of all my hopes and dreams. Naruto said with a smirk, getting an eye roll from the silver gray haired teen. Must be small then. Mercury replied. That's rude. Emily commented as she looked at the teen. You obviously don't know the friendship we have. Mercury said dryly as he looked at Emily. They were guys. They complimented each other by insulting each other. Naruto opened his umbrella and rested it on his shoulder, blocking the sun's rays while he looked at the two. I gotta say. We make a good team. He commented before he smirked. You guys are lucky to have me. He added in cocksure wannabe dashing type of manner. Mercury rolled his eyes while Emily smirked. You're really arrogant there, sweetie. She said. It's confidence, not arrogance. Naruto replied with a wily smirk as he gave her a wink. You just haven't seen me in the field. He trailed off as he struck a pose and jabbed his umbrella forward. When they see my moves, they'll be running for the hills. He said. Loser. Mercury said as he crossed his arms. The only thing they'll be running from is your attitude. He commented. I'm not picky. Naruto replied with a smirk as he rested his umbrella over his shoulder. Ikgao walked up towards the three, causing the three genin to look at her. You all did well. Even if you three did split up at certain parts, it was because of the situations I was putting you in. But you all eventually regrouped and went to take me on. She said, as she looked at the three. It was nothing. Mercury replied, as he smirked and crossed his arms behind the back of his head. White Ikgao said dryly, as she looked at the silver gray haired teen. Tomorrow we'll begin our team, and begin our mission she began, getting a groan from Mercury. Are we going to do those stupid D ranks? Mercury asked with a sigh. They rubbed her forehead. Mercury, you do realize that it's mandatory for normal gen and she began. But we're not formal, are we? Naruto asked with a smirk. He knew what D-ranks were, since Mercury liked to complain. And Naruto wasn't too keen on the thought of being someone's worker, he was an assassin, not someone's bitch. No? Ikgao said, before she sighed. I'll think about us doing C-ranks, and maybe B-ranks, we've already done a few hundred D-ranks. She admitted, as she rubbed the back of her neck. She could admit she was getting really tired of him. She was in the Anbu for God's sakes, it was demeaning to do old people's and lazy people's chores. You two are free to go. She said, as she looked at Mercury and Emily. Sure thing, Sensei. Emily said, as she turned and looked at Naruto. Later, sweetie. She said cheerfully, as she reached out and ruffled the blonde's hair before she walked off. Mercury gave Naruto a look before he crossed his arms behind his head and walked off. Naruto looked at Ikgao and gave her a smirk. Trying to get me all alone, you little minx. He commented shamelessly. Ikgao gave him a look as she unsheathed her sword. 
Whoa, 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 same team. He said, as he put a hand up. Mikdao smacked him upside the head with the dull side of her sword. Ow, what the hell? Naruto yelled, as he held the back of his neck. That was for the mixed comments. Mikdao said dryly, before she sheathed her sword. She walked over towards a tree, and came back over towards him, holding several Bakano wooden swords. Choose your size, she instructed, as she pulled out a katana size, and shaped Bakan. Naruto glanced at the Bakan, and noticed several different ones varying in size, some being Tantan size, Katana size, Kadachi size, and Wakazashi size. He reached down, and picked up the Wakazashi size Bakan. He held the Bakan in one hand, as he held his umbrella in the other. In a battler fight, he would hold both his umbrella, and a sword, so he didn't want to train in wielding only one of the two things he would carry at once. Now what you need to understand, Ikao began. Hey, 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 I've studied your body movement, muscle twitches, stances, hand movements, chest movements from breathing, as well facial structure for your emotional state, while fighting with swords, Naruto said, as he tapped the side of his head with his umbrella. All of that's right here, well it's a little difficult to remember it all, but I'm not one to forget. He said with a wily smirk, as he turned his body a bit, moved his left leg back, and moved his right arm forward a few inches. Ikka raised an eyebrow, as she looked at the stance he took. It looked like it was a mixture of hers, Hades, and several of his own personal additions. They really seemed to undersell your intelligence. She thought, referring to the academy. It was like he had the Shuringen, without having the Shuringen. Naruto smirked, as he moved his arm forward, and pressed the side of his Bakken against Ikgao's Bakken. Well now, shall we do the tango? He asked with a smirk, causing the purple-haired Jonin to grip the handle of her Bakken with two handles, and slash the wooden sword at him. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.